I said, we, we train Harimau from two perspectives. From the Minangkabau, okay, or from Pendekar Hanafi, Mahaguru Richard Crab de Boards, and from Babak Willem de Tuars, okay, and obviously the de Tuars family style, if you will, okay. And we look at the two variants of this, okay. Like I said before, you want to think about one system is to cause pain, hurt, destroy, and spread apart, okay, like a tiger. Um, causing a massacre, basically. The other way to look at it is like a monkey or a kitten playing with something or a monkey playing and keeping something and keeping it close like it wants to hoard it, okay? Those are the two principles of how we look at things. So sometimes you'll see me doing harimau um, and you'll see me doing locks and things and they're not really locks. Remember what I told you? They're breaks. I'm looking to break something and move on. In both variants of Harimau, we look at breaking and moving, okay, or hitting and moving. The lines blur a little bit, and that's going to happen because, as I told you before, you have Chimachan, which is Javanese Harimau, and Minangkaba, okay. Um, they both require leg strength. The Sumatran Harimau tends to work a wider base. And a low stance. However, don't forget to train the narrow stance and a low base. Okay, the Javanese harimau tends to work the narrow first and then later wider. Ultimately, they both achieve the same idea. Okay. Um, a couple other things to think about when you're training harimau, and this is where it gets interesting. The internal training of harimau is a lot like uh, Chen Tai Chi and Tai Chi Chuan also the posture training of Shaolin, like the, the 18 Lohan postures, okay? And you can see the influence of old Vedic culture. You see the, the influence of old Vedic yogic postures or warrior poses, okay? These warrior poses, which in Silat is your Kuda Kuda, must be trained like you would do yoga, okay? You have to hold the posture so that you unlock in the posture the, the understanding and the strength and the tendon strength and the connective strength and the energy that you can move through the body, okay? So it's painful because when you hold a kuda kuda, you should learn to hold it for a minute, two minutes, three minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and see how your body reacts. You're, tr you're strengthening your tendons, your muscles, now, there's a lot of uh, different ways of looking at this. Like, I have friends of mine, you know, we, we all train under Guru Richard Crab de Boards, and some students are training a way where they're constantly moving through the Kuda Kuda. Other students are holding the Kuda Kuda until they develop it, and then moving through very, various Kudas. So, what do I mean by that? When I first started training with Guru Richard Crab de Boards, I asked him, hey, how did Pendekar Hanafi teach you? And he said it was one kuda per year. All right? That would mean that it would take you 28 years to learn Harimau because it would take 28 years to learn all kudas. Okay? Obviously, it doesn't quite happen that way. But if you think about that and you get very disciplined about that, the idea is you learn one posture and you learn to understand that posture 360 degrees and you learn to understand that posture in every angle, every position, every part of your body, you learn how to weaponize that posture or that kuda kuda with every part of your body. You learn to strike through it, evade through it, uh, sweep, scissor, whatever you want to do. The techniques come out of it, okay? Now, what's really interesting to me is, as a Sarak player, okay, is that when Pendekar Hanafi first came to the United States with Guru Richard Crab de Boards, uh, the Detours brothers were there and they met them and they watched them training. And Pendekar Paul Detours said, Oh, what Pendekar Hanafi is doing reminds him of the old sea lot, the old sea lot that his uncles would train. So 
what's fairly fascinating here is the old way, or you call it old school, or whatever you want to call it, old is hard, okay? The old way contains the development of the movement, the energy, the power, okay? Because those postures, when you learn to use them properly, teach you to coil and uncoil, okay? Teach you to generate energy, teach you to, to um, which the Chinese call Fai Jing, okay? In Indonesia, it's the Tanaga, okay? You, you learn how to build the energy. What's, what's also important here is the breathing. You have to learn how to breathe through your postures. And it's a combination of knowing when to inhale, when to exhale, when to hold the breath. And again, very similar to the Chinese systems and the yogic systems, you learn to breathe into your Dantian or your Hara. And you learn to then move that energy and that breath to your extremities, your fingers, your palms, the strike, where you're going to use it, etc. So in Sorak, we have a training where we hold a posture for a long time or do the jurus through any posture, okay? Like for example, in, in Sorak you would do a juru and the old way of training is one juru should take you about 20 minutes. That's a long time to do a juru. You know, normally people see a juru, okay, here's a juru, I'm done. No, 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 you're supposed to train that one juru for 20 minutes, slow, so that the whole thing takes you 20 minutes to complete it, okay? That's the old internal training. A lot of people don't have that, they don't even know that, okay? And a lot of people say, well, those, are, those styles are not internal. You're wrong, they are very internal, okay? In Hiram Al Menankabao, it's the same kind of idea. The way I was taught by Pendekar, uh, Richard Crab de Bortz, I call him Pendekar, because to me he's a Pendekar, um, Mahaguru, is that you had to train it slow, the word or the mantra was low and slow so that you understand every micro movement of your body from posture to posture. Now some people want to go fast, some people want to train fast. That's good. You need to learn to be explosive and fast, but you also need to be accurate and understand every micro movement of your body from transition to transition. That takes discipline. That's not easy to do. Okay. So one of the ways that that I learned from Guru Richard is you take one posture, move to the next posture, move to the next posture, and take your time with it. So some people will move through all 28 kudas and they're done with it. Other people will move through three kudas and it takes them 20, 30 minutes to move through those three kudas. Okay? You decide how to train, but I'm offering you that as a um, idea to get you thinking about your sila. Okay? We can talk more about it. If you have questions, if you want me to talk about something, write it down in the comments. Uh, please click like and subscribe. And if you want me to share any information, if you want to learn something, you can you can uh, send me an email at sdoblis at gmail.com. And you can set up an online training with me. Or we can you can meet me in person. However you want to train is fine. Um, and if not, I can set you up with somebody to train in your area. If, if I can find somebody that knows what they're doing, uh, I can definitely connect you. Okay. So anyhow, if you like what I'm sharing with you, please do me a favor and comment. And also, in the comments, ask me questions. I'll try to make videos to answer them.